Welcome back. Now, as the new CWI Director of Cricket, Miles Bascom has a big job on his hands trying to turn around the men's side's fortunes. Earlier, he filled me in on his vision to take West Indies forward. Miles, this is your first Super 50 as the new Director of Cricket. How important a tournament is this going to be in shaping West Indian 50 over cricket for the next few years? It's going to be vital. Um, coming into this tournament, uh, the white ball head coach, Darren Sammy, he has had meetings with franchise coaches. Um, during the tournament, he will have meetings with players um, as he outlines his brand of white ball cricket and as we make preparations for the 2027 World Cup, which is, which is pretty much what we have. We have four years to ensure that we are able to compete in that World Cup and bring some glory to West Indies cricket. You mentioned the word brand there. So does that mean there's a shift in policy? Is the brand changing? Well, I wouldn't say changing. I would say that it's, it's being defined. Right, um, we do have our own style of cricket in the West Indies. We we are we have flair, um, but we have to be able to keep a pace with you know the, the changing trends. And the Super 50, the 50 over game has changed probably the most um, in the last few years. Um, sport by by England, who who really you know engineered a shift in the paradigm. Um, and now we are looking at the World Cup, and we see. Um, scores of 300 plus being chased comfortably in some cases and you know we have to be able to to keep a pace with that. Not at the World Cup is this almost like a clean slate now ground zero and a great opportunity for a few young players to stick their hands in the air and say I'm the future of West Indies cricket. Yes definitely and and that is the premise on which we are we are walking that you know we have we are trying to lay the foundation in this Super 50 tournament. Um, so we want to be able to define roles, you know, allow players to understand what it is to be an opener for, for the West Indies cricket team, what it is to be a wicket-taking fast bowler, and understand the approach that we want to, to take into 50 over matches. And they will effectively have three to four years, you know, to refine their skills, um, to, to practice those those roles and you know to vie for a chance of being in that 2027 World Cup team. So someone like Alec Athene is a very good example of if you perform in this tournament, your career can take off very quickly. Definitely, and um, I'm sure that Alec is is prime and ready um, to go. I think he understands his game pretty well and. Um, following discussions with um, head coach Sammy, um, because he has been a part of the, the West Indies one day setup already, and um, players like him, you know, would be able to look on at what he is doing, um, listen to what the, the coaches the coaches advising, and and you never know. Um, I think that is probably the only thing that no one can dispute that the, the talent is certainly there. Um, you know, we, we, we just produce it. Um, but what we haven't done well is harness it properly and, and, and maximize the potential that that, that talent. Um, we haven't been able to get that to, to its max potential. And we have to be able to do that better. And I think by clearly defining roles and establishing a clear set of competencies that our player need to, to master, in order to be successful in the international game. I think that we are on the path to, to being able to fully harness and I, I dare to say weaponize that talent that we have. New format this year as well. Eight teams playing in a round robin format and then go through to the semi-finals. What's the thinking behind the change? Yes, um, competition cricket, you have to plan. Uh, you have to plan for every team, right? You have to play against every opposition. That is how you know you know, when you when you have done well in a tournament with this type of format, you know that you have adapted your game from match to match to to different opposition, um, different conditions, and you have still found a way to execute a role and, and excel. And we, from our end, we would know that you know 
this is a player who is ready to go to the next level. I hope you get everything you want from the tournament. So do I, and I hope that the, the players see it as the, the opportunity it is um, to, ex to express themselves and to show you know, that they're willing to play that brand of cricket that we want to have as, a, as our West Indian brand. And I'm sure that if we can see the start of it, um, based on the time, I mean, this is, is pr pretty much a month or two in the making. Um, so any results that we see in this tournament would, would pretty much be a reflection of a change in mindset, right? And not anything that has come through that is systemic. Um, so we as, we, as we try to build it into our system, it would be interesting to see, you know, what difference the change in mindset would make and how that would play out on the field. As Miles mentioned, there is plenty of talent in the Caribbean and Alec Athanase is one who there are very high hopes for. Just over a year ago, he was still awaiting his first professional century. Now he is a test and ODI player. Alec, you've had a great year, but is this competition one that's really close to your heart? Because after you scored 200s in this, your career really took off. I, I would like to think so. Um, I love playing white ball cricket, to be honest, and, and playing for the West Indies, you, you need to come up in this tournament. So I think being this, the, I would say the, start, the, the, the starting of my career, like my year last year, um, is really close to my heart. Talk me through your test debut then against India. Was it everything that you imagined it would be in your dreams walking out there for the first time? <laughs> it was more than it was more actually because I never imagined um, having my debut at home. Um, that was pretty special. Um, I never imagined it against India and in such in, in such touch, um, tough conditions. You know, so I think <laughs> it was a little bit more than I expected. But I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for the way that I handled it got to mention your bowling as well. If I'd have told you a couple of years ago that you're going to bowl 16 overs on your test debut in the first innings and your first wicket is going to be Rohit Sharma, what would you have said to me? I would have taken it for sure. But I, I don't really bowl back home. That's the, that's the surprising thing. I, I am confident in my bowling, but I don't really, like I would say, I don't really like to bowl that much. I love batting. But I mean, I would have taken it any day if someone told me that I would have Rory Chama as my first test wicket. Yeah, he's in the pocket now. Um, so you made both your test and your ODI debut this year. At this stage of your career, what comes more naturally to you, red ball or white ball batting? White ball, definitely white ball. Um, white ball suits, suits my style of play. Um, I love to be aggressive like most people. So um, I, I like to be aggressive. I like to, to use my feet, hit the ball over the top, you know, and... Red ball, you have to be a bit more careful. Well, you, you know, you have to bat a bit more longer. So I, I love red, red ball cricket. I think test cricket is the absolute best cricket to play and look at. But I love playing white ball. Let's talk about the Winwards then. Do you feel that you have unfinished business in this competition after what happened last year? You started so well and then you just faded away at the end. Yeah, definitely. I am, I am someone who prides on standards. And like you said, I, I started well and then fell away. I, I think it was a bit because of overconfidence. You know, you, you start so well that you think that you have everything covered and then you have a couple of loose scores and you think that, oh, well, you know, I will catch up at the end and then what if you don't, you get a good ball. And so it was that case. So I think right now it's about me just, you know, sticking to my game plan, making sure that I have everything covered, making sure that I prepare well, you know, and let the results take care of itself. And does the team feel that way as well? Because the team started well and then had a good chance to get through to the semi-finals and then just faded. Yeah, definitely. We, we as a team, thought that we, you know, we set ourselves short somewhere. Um, we, we had a, a chance to go back to the drawing board. We had a chance to look at everything, you know, and hopefully that we could, you know, keep the fire blazing right through the tournament this year. How do you assess your squad this year? You've lost one or two players, but you've gained a couple as well. Yeah, we have a very good, you know, balanced team. Um, Mixed with a, a, a bit, a bit of all around, as I would say, like, because we have, I think almost three guys who normally bowl and normally bat. So you know, I mean, we have a very good balanced team, and you know, we are just, uh, we are just a group of young boys excited, you know, looking to get out on the park and putting on a show for the fans. Yeah.